Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. The IBF has ruled that Golovkin can fight Vonis Matarosin under one condition. Stay tuned. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego in the back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang, gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations, the Vimo donations, and the Patreon family we work in. Now, Gennady Golovkin, in the words of E40, has choices. Everybody got, ooh, everybody got choices, man. Right? The IBF just gave Golovkin his choice. They said, you know what? We're going to allow for you to fight this fight with Vanas Matarosin, even though he's a junior middleweight coming off a long layoff, two-year layoff, and a loss. He can move up and fight. We'll sanction this and we'll allow this. However, we're receiving pressure from Team Derevinchenko, who is your IBF mandatory and has been the IBF mandatory. So these are the stipulations for Triple G being allowed to fight Vanas Matarosin. Shout out to ESPN. They have um, this all printed out. And it says, these are the outline four terms under which the exception was granted. Golovkin Matarosin must take place on or before May 5th, which is, is fight week. So that's a done deal. They have the stub hub already reserved. So that's going down. It's on HBO, regular HBO. Golovkin must agree in writing before the fight that he will next fight the IBF middleweight mandatory, which is Derevchenko, within 90 days of the May 5th bout or by Friday, August 3rd, 2018. Three, Golovkin must agree in writing before the May 5th fight to indemnify, hold harmless, and otherwise reimburse the IBF for any legal fees or other expenses related to the granting of this exception, including but not limited to the cost attendant to any result resultant litigation. Golovkin, the fourth one, the fourth clause or whatever you want to call it, bullet point. Golovkin must comply with all of the conditions set forth in the granting of this exception or formal sanction won't be issued for the May 5th bout. So basically, Golovkin's team has to accept the fact that we're going to grant you this. I'm going to give you layman's terms, how I interpret this. Basically, the IBF is saying, cool, the Canelo failed drug test shit is not your fault. So we'll allow you to fight a fighter of your choice. We'll sanction it and your your belts will be eligible. If Vonis beats you, you'll get to keep your belt. If you beat Vonis Matarosin, these are the conditions. The conditions are that you have to fight Derevchenko. You know what I mean? They don't specifically say his name because it's it's a legal print. But as of right now, your IBF mandatory is Derevchenko. I think he got that position when he beat Toriano Johnson, right? So you have basically, you have to agree, you and your teams have to agree to fight Dervinchenko next. That's basically what it says. If you win May 5th, you must fight Dervinchenko and agree and, and stage the fight by August, right? So this is this. I'm going to give you my opinion. There's a lot of pressure for Golovkin because now he's in a, a position where Obviously, he couldn't control Canelo fell in two drug tests. I understand Canelo did the hair follicle test. I don't know if that 100% um, exonerates him because the fact of the matter is he did have clenbuterol in his test different amounts that showed up in two different tests, February 17th and 20th. So the hair follicle, I don't know enough about clenbuterol to know that it would detect 100%. But whatever, that's neither here nor there. The Lovkin's team couldn't control that. But this is what they can control. Derevchenko stepped up. I talked to Derevchenko's people, including his promoter, Lou DiBella, and his trainer, Andre Ruzier. They want the fight. They want the Golovkin fight, and they were willing to take it on short notice. They put up a, a fit, which I'm not saying it in a throwing shade. They're supposed to do that. Take care of your fighter. They're not in charge of the career of Golovkin. So they, they fought for their fighter to get his chance. He still couldn't get the May 5th fight, but now it's on and popping. Now, because Golovkin wanted to not fight Dervinchenko or Demetrius Andre, but really we'll say Dervinchenko, but because he wanted that and they're not backing down from that, then now he has to fight Dervinchenko next and agree to him if he beats Vanas Matarosin. So this is where it gets interesting. We all know Canelo has a no-find suspension that got reduced from a year to six months 
and it was uh, retroactive from when he first failed the drug test, which is February. So by mid-August, if you do the math from February, February 17th, I think was the first failed test, all the way to August, that's six months, August 16th. So the 16th, 17th, 18th, right around there, Canelo will be eligible to fight again. We know Canelo prefers to fight on the quote-unquote Mexican dates, May and September. So obviously he missed the deadline and he's suspended, so he won't be able to fight Cinco de Mayo weekend. Golovkin is fighting Matarosin this week. You know what I mean? This weekend will be Cinco de Mayo weekend, right? But he'll be eligible by September. So this is the conundrum. Now Triple G obviously wants to fight Canelo. That's a, a fight where he wants to prove what happened in the first fight. First fight ended in a draw. And also, um, I'm sure he wants to thoroughly beat Canelo. And we all know, I mean, anyone who's not who has brain cells knows that the Canelo fight would be more lucrative to Golovkin's bank. It's a bigger fight. It's a more a more money available. But this is the conundrum. Team Triple G, since they came in the gate, they stressed what they were about. They said, oh, we'll fight anyone from 54 to 68, which we haven't seen him fight at 54, haven't seen him fight at 68. And there were people like Andre Ward. There was people like Canelo at one point didn't want to move up to middleweight. And he said, I'll fight you at 55. And they said, no, he's a middleweight. He's a middleweight champ. Come up to 160, which later happened. So now... It's going to be about calling Triple G's bluff or see if they really are truthful and they were being transparent with what they said. Because because since Golovkin came through the gates, he says, hey, my goal, middleweight history, division, history, division, Bernard Hopkins, Monzon, right? He said these things. He said that his whole goal was to unify the division. So if you don't fight Dervinchenko by August, then they're going to take one of your titles. You are one click away, one belt away as of right now, as of the recording of this video, one belt away from being undisputed at middleweight. Now you're in a pickle because most people think you'll beat Vonis Matarosin, right? We'll see. Maybe he has some tricks up his sleeve. He's an Olympian. But most people would bet their money that your Triple G will beat Vonis. So hypothetically speaking, if he, be if he beats Vonis, do you take the money fight and a rematch that you really want versus Canelo, which would shred the the logic and it would shred the ideology that you and your team came in the gate saying, oh, hey, he's he's all about history. He wants to join the ranks of Bernard Hopkins and Roy Jones and the great fighters that have fought at middleweight because you would be taking a money fight with Canelo and you would get your belt stripped by doing that. And I don't know if there's any way around it at this point. Derevinchenko's team is not backing down. So we're going to see real soon. I don't have to talk about it, but that's the reality of the situation. We're going to see real soon what Team Triple G is really about. They've questioned and they've throw, thrown darts at other people. Like when Canelo fought Amir Khan, they say, hey, no, he's, he's not fight, not true fighter. He's not fighter. He's business, man. He's clown, right? So now we're going to see if Triple G and his team is a businessman. And listen, I'm from the Bay, home of the pimps, players, and hustlers. I know how to hustle. I understand the hustle. I love the hustle. I love this game, right? I don't hate on no one getting their money. That's not a thing. However, you got to be congruent with what you say. If you say, hey, I'm all about fuck the money. I'm all about legacy. I'm all about joining the ranks of these top fighters. If that was your sticking point, that was your, your selling point, then I want to see you stay true to that. Right. So, of course, I want to see Canelo versus Triple G. But now, like I said, Team Triple G is in a pickle because if they fight Canelo, it sounds like they're going to get stripped from the IBF. Because they're only granting one exception, and that's Vonis Matarosin. And that's just because of the timing um, and a freak accident. You know what I mean? Or not accident, whatever happened with Canelo, failed drug test. So it's going to be real interesting to see what Team Triple G decides. Do they go the money route or do they go the legacy route? But I do have interviews, and I can bring them out the archives if you truly want. Interviews that I filmed, right? Where Team Triple G, I might even fuck around and put it at the end of this video. Team Triple G says, that they're in a history division and they're about legacy and the belts and they want to unify the division so if you to not fight Dervinchenko 
choose the money route, then that that steamrolls everything you've said up until this point regarding what you're in it for. You know what I mean? All the criticism to Canelo calling him a businessman or Floyd fighting Conor McGregor. And you said, hey, as, as a circus, you know, what I mean, it was a circus fight. If you're willing to do the same exact things that they are, which is fight the, the most lucrative, attractive fights, no matter what, and get your paper, then you should have said that. But you can't criticize and call people clowns, circus fights and um, businessmen, not fighters, not true fighters and and act like you don't respect the hustle and then turn around and do that. So it is it's it's going to be very interesting. I'm just going to leave it at that. Very interesting to see what they decide to do beyond Vanis Matarosan. I don't have to speculate. I'm just laying everything out there from what I've seen. And this is based on what Team Triple G has said. They said he's a legacy fighter and he wants to unify the division. So please don't allow the IBF to strip you because you, you choose a money fight. You know what I mean? Fight Dervinchenko and then maybe you can fight Canelo for your third fight after. But who knows? Because in my opinion, I think Team Triple G has allowed Golden Boy and, and Canelo to dictate their recent career. So if Canelo's like, fuck that, I want to fight you in a rematch in September. The past history has showed that Team Triple G is willing to stagnate what they're doing at the request and the behest of Golden Boy slash Canelo. They did it when Frank Warren, Billy Joe Sanders, Billy Joe, I got I got me pinned. I want a couple things in me way. And he was like, hey, Golovkin and hey, Triple G string and all this. He said, I got me pinned. I got me pinned. Right. And Billy Joe Sanders is, was switched up and said he wants the Golovkin fight. And Oscar De La Hoya told Team Triple G, hey, if you take that, if you take that Billy Joe Sanders fight, then this fight is a wrap. You're not getting the Canelo fight because we need to promote immediately after Canelo faces Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. And and Team Triple G, they they heard that warning and they listened to it because they didn't fight Billy Joe Sanders, which is what I've been telling you. Team Triple G, after Jacobs, they should immediately try to fight Billy Joe Saunders, set history, be undisputed. If you can beat Billy Joe Saunders, then that's out the way. And then you can you would have been free to do all money fights. But now you're kind of in a pickle because now you got to choose between a great lucrative rematch and money fight or potentially getting stripped. Well, not even potentially. The IBF is outlining you will be stripped if you don't fight Dervinchenko. Your only exception was Vonis Matarosin. So the other option that Team Triple G could have did is scrap the Matarosin fight, fight Dervinchenko since his team was pressing it on late notice, and then you would have been free if you obviously if you kept your titles and beat Dervinchenko, then you would have been free for September by Canelo. So I don't really quite fully understand Team Triple G's motion here. They I think they should have either fought. Dervinchenko for this fight because the Vonis Matarosin that's just taking up space most people feel they know what's going to happen so I would have me I would have probably tried to get you know what I mean my mandatory out the way so I'd be free by September to get my money for Canelo but for whatever reason they chose a guy coming off a two year layoff and who had been shelved and is now with Don, Don King you know what I mean coming off of a loss and now the IBF granted them an exception, but now they're also saying. So it's going to be interesting to see what they decide. But first, we have to get past Triple G. Vonis, let me know what you guys think. That's a detailed breakdown of what's going on. Drop your thoughts on Triple G potentially losing his belt, getting stripped if he does not fight Dervinchenko. Make sure you smash the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego signing off. Why Canelo? Because he's champion middleweight. Mm -hmm. Why, why, why Cotto? Because he's champion. He's big champion. And Sergio Martinez, middleweight. My focus on middleweight division. You know, my goal is all the belts in middleweight division. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I feel this great division, uh, like history division, like Manson, like uh, Bernard Hopkins, you know, he's amazing fighters. Okay. You don't feel it, then it must be too real to touch. I'm lying and if I ain't correct.